guys. So we have the uh, bow unwrapped from off plastic and have removed the tape from just at the uh, riser section. So I've got my center line indexed here uh, in white, as you will notice. Uh, so next step is to uh, get our riser going. And our obvious problem is that the piece itself, or if we're going to put on our piece of riser, we're going to have to get this shaped. We're not going to be able to bend this into uh, the shape that we want. Now, once we do get it bent, we're going to actually laminate this up in layers. So I've got a pretty thin layer of epay here, which is about, uh, I want to say about an eighth of an inch thick. And what this does is it's going to uh, get a tight glue line here and then create, you know, as we, as we try to mill this out to the uh, shape that we want to get a really thin glue line on all, on, on the two glue lines here so that uh, we minimize the gaps that occur. Uh, even though we're using EA40 uh, smooth on to make it happen, uh, we're not going to count on it to fill the gaps to that degree uh, at the grip. So we do not want this thing uh, popping off the handle. We will take this and switch it out right like that. So that we got a good joint and you'll see that there's no light passing through that joint uh, as we've got it tight so that's what we need right there so this should look pretty familiar uh, i got plastic taped down on my work surface got everything prepped i uh degreased everything with uh some acetone in advance of glue up here. I've mixed up my smooth on. I have blue tape affixed just past where my finished joint will be. So I am going to spread my glue just a little past that, but that is kind of an insurance policy, truth be told. And I am applying this rather generously. kind of cleaned up so I sanded off the edges as you can see there's just very little bits uh, remnant bits of epoxy on those edges but nothing that's going to interfere with us uh, doing any work on the bow at this point um, and then turn our attention to the riser section here and we have built up this riser section but it's kind of blocky on these edges and you can see I've got a line drawn in where we're going to uh, make a cut to get that riser shaped out. But a very important thing to uh, keep in mind, you can see that there is, there was a thin piece of EPE glued in between uh, the riser stock and the, the belly piece or the main bow. And we tapered that edge okay, at about a 45 degree angle. And what this does is allows us to put the blade of the bandsaw in here with the teeth pointing this direction never ever ever cut like this because when you get to the end of that cut and the blade slips and goes right into the belly of your bow right at the fade you have ruined your bow all at once uh, i have done that one time ever only and never ever did i cut that direction ever again here we are uh, at least roughed in right so 
cut these sections out on the bandsaw and then took it to the uh, spindle sander um, with a pretty small spindle to try and get this uh, blended into the belly. Um, notice that I used blue tape here uh, at the transition area to ensure that I don't dig into the wood without being aware of it. So you'd chew up the blue tape before it got into the belly. And that is just one uh, little piece of safety or a safety measure that I take to ensure that I don't over grind those uh, feathered edges on my ring. And we're basically at the, what I would call the starting line for tillering this bow. Now, bear in mind that before we ever glued this together, we tillered our bamboo backing. We ensured that it's bending evenly across its length in an arc of the circle uh, type of tiller. And we also tapered and pre-tillered our belly. Uh, when we did that, we tillered it to a, a very light resistance. So it's very small uh, dimensionally, and it would bend very easily uh, when, when we would floor tiller it. Now, when we glue it together in this fashion, we have put in a lot of energy storage in the form of shear along the glue line of the limb. And then we put in this uh, reflex. Okay, so as the bamboo actually stretches back to straight, it's compressing the belly back to straight, uh, which is the condition they were in before they were ever glued up, but it's still storing energy. That is the mystery explained, okay, of a peri-reflex bow, or the glue-up process. Now, since we did that, we are, generally speaking, in our weight class, our general weight class, okay, so we're already uh, floor tillering rather easily, uh, and so we can get on about, like, faceting out the belly and doing a an, an initial tiller on this bow, and I want to take a minute to explain what uh, that faceting process looks like. All right, so if you were to take and just cut this limb right in half, right, and you look at it from its edge, you'd have the, the bamboo backing like this, and you would have your belly piece just like this. So this is the length of our, this is, this is the the cross section of our our lamb or our limb rather so what we're going to do is we're going to take off material on these corners like this and what this does is it starts the weight reduction the resistance reduction okay and as we start reducing this edge and we're approaching a narrowness right here and we need to lose weight so let's say it's still pulling at like 60 pounds at 20 inches a draw and we just don't want it to be that heavy that's where we start removing wood here right we start making it a little thinner now all these removals go from fade all the way to tip and we might be a little lighter out at our tips because we want to keep the we want to keep them as thick as possible from back to belly so that we can narrow them as much as possible. And we'll discuss that later on as we're going through the tillering process. So as we start taking off these edges to come into weight, we continue to work this off on these edges, leaving this primarily alone because we've got a good taper uh, on the flat belly piece. Now, as we start approaching some tillering opportunities, that's when we start removing here. This is where we tiller, is on this edge here. All of our weight is managed here and here. This is where we get our bow bending at the weight that we want. This is where we get it bending in the shape that we want. And it's important that we approach those two things independent of one another. That way, we're not chasing the shape of the bow at the same time as we're chasing the weight of the bow. Because when you get the two confused, you end up with a mess. It's a pretzel that weighs 20 pounds at, at 28 inches. All right, guys. So hopefully you can see those facets in here. I left the blue tape on at the fade to kind of give a, a feel for how uh, 
how much of a uh, chamfer more or less has been put on those limb edges. So this is just a very early beginning. really just want to show the initial bends here what we're dealing with I hate I hate using scales at this stage of the game guys because it's really not telling you much of anything uh, if anything at all uh, the only uh, value I see it with it from here is just kind of helping you understand how this peri reflex design works right so since those limbs were glued in uh, or were generated in straight lines right like those pieces of wood were straight before we glued them up and the only difference going on right now is the fact that we're working a shear line being the glue line between the bamboo and the ipe and when we pull it straight like when the limbs become straight the wood this the wood pieces themselves are just back to like their original shape before we glued them up if that makes sense right so really there shouldn't be any actual strain on the belly or on the back and where where we're storing energy right now is on that glue line so i spend a lot of time talking about getting your bow into that weight class or into the neighborhood that you want it to finish out at uh, before you spend a lot of time going through the fine tillering stage and etc like our first goal is to at least be in the ballpark. So this bow is still really pretty stout. It's one thing to be pulling it on a, uh, a tree, uh, that especially one that I have uh, doubled up the pulleys so I don't feel the full effect of what it takes to pull on that uh, bow. Uh, when I get it over to the tillering stick, it's clear to me that this bow is quite stout still. Um, and then floor tillering it, it's still just a little outside the weight range that we are trying to come in at, which is between 45 and 50 pounds. So I'm going to, again, remove a little more uh, material on these corners. And as I start taking wood off, I may get to the, to the degree where I'm actually taking wood directly off the side. Left the tape in place right, uh, right here at the, the fade out to give you an idea of where I'm at in terms of the um, grinding away these these edge corners and so we're getting pretty narrow here across the belly and we're starting to get pretty th pretty thin up against our edges here which means it's about time now to actually wholesale take off some material from the edges of this belt just come in very with a very narrow line and I will take this line along the whole length of the limb on all four sides and we will then grind it down uh, just similar to the way we're taking down the belly. Now if you are in this project without power tools uh, you can do this with a rasper file exactly um, it just takes a little longer right so uh, hand tools are not a problem for this process at all this is sort of what it should look like when you're getting ready to take down those edges. All right, so I got just pencil line on each side. Uh, but I want to really point out that as it goes down the limb and it approaches the tip, that pencil line begins to disappear. And so I want to maintain the width out here at the tips for right now, because I want to be able to adjust should I need to narrow one side to true up the, the string alignment. All right, I have taken uh, material off just to the lines. You can see that I still got a little bit of original mess here at the tips, but uh, you can tell that the length of this bow has been uh, ground down. Uh, just a whisper's evidence of the pencil line that we applied there uh, to take a little bit of width off of this thing. Uh, in total, it's probably taken at best an eighth of an inch off of its width, and I don't think it probably even took that much. Uh, and did not 
did not lighten it very much okay i put the same long string on it went out to the tillering tree uh, tugged it out to where we were looking uh, instead of 40 pounds plus it was pulling at about 35 36 pounds to get to the same uh, distance so you know call it a five pound reduction but over the course of tillering this bow you know that there's going to be some some compression uh, effects that come into play and everything else so uh, it pushes a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to call it in our ballpark. And a word of caution, guys, about that ballpark term that I use. If you want to build a 45, 50 pound bow and you want your floor tiller to be in the ballpark, and we're talking on a green stave or a green board blank like this, it is going to compress as you, as you work it out uh, all the way to full draw. So ballpark is going to have you probably 10 pounds over that goal, uh, maybe even 15. So on the long string here, I am pulled out I, and I don't pay attention to length. So I couldn't tell you how, how far down the tillering stick I am pulling. Uh, but what I can tell you is that those limbs are beginning to come straight, number one. And number two, we're at about a depth that will get us to string height, right? So once I've been able to uh, reasonably get the bow to bend, um, and I'll let it kind of hang out here for a few minutes, uh, pulled to this, this distance, and then <clears throat> we'll get her strung up. Now, the reason I like to get her onto a short string as early as possible, okay, the, and I, I've, I've explained this in some previous videos, but uh, it bears repeating, a long string is not going to give you the right bearing out here at your tips when it has uh, got your bow drawn, say, to this shape. <clears throat> it's pulling more down instead of more across the, the way this way. Laterally, I guess, would be the, the term. Um, and you want to get that string applying pressure in the right direction on your limbs. Otherwise, you're not going to get an accurate picture of how they're bending. All right, just got just got it strung up. Um, if we look down its length, we are in pretty good shape in terms of uh, alignment. I'm pretty happy there so far. Uh, you'll see that the shape of those limbs are very similar now. Like we're not seeing one that is uh, holding on to reflex so much more than the other. Uh, from this point right here, guys, this is what I call um, the sweat out phase of things. So it's strung, it's, it's just now figuring out how to adjust to its new environment, if that's what you want to call it. It needs to get used to being on a string. So. All right, it's been a half hour, and the bow itself seems to be doing really pretty well as far as keeping its shape. <clears throat> now, before uh, I left it here, I took a quick measurement just to make sure that I had, you know, an idea of, of distance between the fade to the string on each side of the grip, so we could see where we are in terms of like a stronger limb or a uh, weaker limb and they both measured out at six and three quarters now this limb is still at six and three quarters and this one is right at six and three quarters so we're dealing with uh <clears throat> evenly strength limbs uh which is the perfect scenario uh we are we are every every indication here is that we are on track for our weight we are on track for tiller we are on track for uh alignment and everything seems to be going really pretty well so from here guys uh we're gonna let it rest in its relaxed state and uh go from there uh, and then we can kind of get a look at its shape uh it's freshly unstrung we're still dealing with about a similar amount <clears throat> of reflex as when it was first pulled out of the uh, mold.
It might have had a little bit more, but we are maintaining a reflex and <clears throat> we let this relax for another 20 minutes. It'll probably be back right to its normal shape that it was. So we are showing very little strain in these limbs up to this point. Uh, we are ready to uh, start tillering in earnest from this point forward. So guys, that is going to be uh, the next episode of our uh, build. Uh, this is going to go apparently to four, four videos, uh, but don't miss next week. We're going to go through a lot of very uh, um, detailed work in terms of getting this bow to full draw.